So this is it, my new to me 1990 Mazda Miata with a V8 in it. This thing is pretty wild and I am super excited about it, but before I show you around the car and talk about this swap, I wanna start it up so you could hear what this thing sounds like. All right, so inside here, it looks just like a normal Miata, but when we start it up, it'll sound nothing like a Miata. Man, this thing started up nice. Now this thing is carbureted, so it's a little bit different than what I'm used to, but wow, this thing just started right up super, super easy. The battery does keep going dead, so I had to put a jump pack on it. Hopefully I'll sort that issue out. Right guys, so that's what this thing sounds like. Literally sounds like an old muscle car because the whole drive line basically is an old muscle car, which is pretty sweet. Now, before I give you the walk around and go over all the build details on this thing, this car needs a name. Now, it is basically a Mustang Miata, a more displacement Miata, and a Viata, but I wanna give this thing a actual human name because this car's got personality. So if you have any ideas, throw them down below. Maybe I'll pick yours. Now, let me show you this car. All right, so under the hood, we have a built Ford 302 V8. Now, this engine was actually built basically from the block up, so it's not a factory engine out of anything. It's something that was really built up by the previous owner. Now, I don't know a lot about carbureted engines, and honestly, I don't know a lot about V8s, but I'll tell you what I do know about this thing so far. It's a Ford 302. It has aftermarket AFR heads on it. It has headers that are part of the Monster Miata swap kit, which is how this whole entire swap was done. It is a carbureted engine, which is something that's new to me. It's a Holly carb. I'll get more into that after with future plans on this car. And yeah, that's what's sitting under this hood. Pretty sweet. Honestly, this whole engine fits super, super well in here. And I'm pretty impressed with the fitment and with how all of this really just went together and it looks nice. Back here, we got a little bit of house plumbing going to the heater core. I think that thing's freaking hilarious, but this thing does have heat and it does work. So that's pretty cool too. Moving on to the interior of this car, this thing is basically a stock Miata inside, which is pretty cool. It's been a long time since I've been in a truly stock Miata interior. So we still got the stock seats in here. We got a stock and a steering wheel that's been wrapped, but I don't really love that wrap. I might do something with that down the line. Over here, we got a few gauges. We got a temp gauge. We got a voltage gauge, which has been reading super low because there are problems, which I'll get into after. Then we have an oil pressure gauge over there. The tack is not wired up right now on the gauge cluster, but there is an aftermarket tack over on the side here. So I'll have to make a plan with what I want to do with that. This car does have a brand new soft top with a zip down rear window, and it's a decently nice top. The install on it wasn't absolutely perfect, so it looks a little baggy. I'm pretty picky with these, but I'm not going to change it. Getting back into the rest of the build here, this car has a Tremec T5 transmission and a Ford 7.5 limited slip rear end, so it should be able to handle the power from this build. <laughs> Now, when this car was initially built, it was dynoed and it was dynoed at 368 horsepower. Now, I drove this car and I don't think it's making that much power right now, which we'll have to dive into. But when it was built, 368 is what this thing made. Also, I don't know if that was at the wheels or if that was on an engine dyno because the paperwork doesn't really show that. This car does appear to still be on the stock baby little NA 1.6 brakes, so I might do an upgrade on those. Like I said, this thing was done with a Monster Miata swap kit, so Monster Miata mounts for the engine, a modified subframe, a modified oil pan, modified mounts for the transmission, and a custom diff mounting solution. Also, it comes with stiffer springs to match the little bit of extra weight. Based on everything I've read, this swap doesn't actually add a whole ton of weight though. It's supposed to only add about 265 pounds to a Miata. So this thing is still a really light car, probably around 2,600 pounds. This thing does have aftermarket vented fenders that are fiberglass. And I don't know if I like those or not. This did come with some other fenders that I might put on it. And it comes with a modified hood with these vents right there. And then that bigger cap 
towel there to fit the intake. This car is not problem free though, and there are a list of things that I need to go through before I'm gonna be happy and ready to take this thing on some longer drives, maybe take it to the track and maybe drift it. Let us know down below what you think I should do with this car. One of the problems we actually discovered when we were getting this thing back to my house and the previous owner was nice enough to drive it to my house. We found out then that the battery wasn't charging and it might need an alternator when he was following us home and this thing just died on the side of the road. So that was one of the first experiences that I had with this car after the test drive. So not a great one, probably needs an alternator, needs to get that electrical system checked out. And then it also needs a bracket for the alternator. Some other small issues before I talk about one big issue is the top drains were clogged. So there was a little bit of water in the trunk and in the footwell. I already fixed that problem and I already have a full video doing that on a different Miata. And then when it was really cold the other day, I was having trouble getting this car into gear, probably because the slave cylinder was just really cold. I'm hoping that that's what the issue was. The bigger potential problem with this car is it does consume a decent amount of oil and you could see it spitting oil when you're driving it. Hard. Now, this car currently doesn't have a PCV valve that I can see, so that may be the issue. It may be rings. We're going to be diving into this thing, and hopefully it's not a big problem. It's mostly going to be prep stuff with this car, though, because here in New England, we're in the middle of winter. We got six inches of snow literally the day after I bought this car. We're supposed to get up to 12 today. So, yeah, it's just going to be working on this thing and getting it ready for next season. <laughs> Again, if you have any name ideas, please leave them down below. I'd love to see what you come up with. Subscribe so you don't miss more action of this car, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.